Hey brother, Ben, Inside Out has been crushing it on the award show circuit. So today I wanted to revisit Inside Out and who might be becoming my favorite Pixar character of all time. Riley Anderson. Riley is unique in that so many different kinds of people feel they can project themselves onto her, which leads to a lot of questions, some of which we've already tried to answer on this channel, like why does she have male and female emotions, or who is her monster? And today we're going to answer one more. Is Riley adopted? <laughs> the bat you're probably thinking uh jay the first scene is riley being born how could she be adopted yes we do see riley right after she's born but it's possible we don't actually see the woman who gave birth to her allow me to refresh your memory the first scene is actually riley opening her eyes and her parents talking to her for the first time take a good look at her parents first they appear to be standing something women who just gave birth don't really do right afterwards and also does her mom look like she just gave birth like disheveled and sweaty and exhausted no and look what she's wearing. It looks like just regular clothes, not a hospital gown like you might expect. I also think that we, the audience, are supposed to believe this is the first interaction between the parents and Riley. And unlike how you might expect a newborn baby to be, like slimy and screaming, she's all clean and swaddled up and asleep. All of this points to the idea that someone else actually gave birth to Riley, and after she was cleaned up, she was then handed to her new parents. Now that might sound like shaky ground to build an adoption case on, but don't worry, there is more stable evidence. Like, for example, how did two brown-haired, brown-eyed people give birth to a blonde-haired, blue-eyed daughter? Genetically, it's not impossible, but it is difficult. The science can get a little bit tricky, but just to keep things simple, let's use those fun Punnett squares you learned about in seventh grade science class. First, let's look at her eyes. When you're born, each parent passes you a pair of alleles, shown here by letters. Uppercase are dominant and lowercase are recessive. If if we cross those letters in a Punnett square, we can predict what features you will have when you're born. Brown eyes are dominant and blue eyes are recessive, and if a dominant gene is present at all, it will always mask a recessive gene. So for Riley to have blue eyes, both her parents would need to be carrying a dominant brown allele to explain their own hair color and a recessive blue allele to pass on to Riley, and that would still just give her a 25% chance of being a blue-eyed person. But here's where it gets tricky, because all the same stuff is true for blonde hair versus brown hair. So Riley has to win this Aryan lottery twice, giving her just a 1 in 16 or 6.25% chance of having blonde hair and blue eyes. Now obviously that's not impossible, but it does seem less likely and I think it does help our case, as does this. Does it seem odd? that Riley is an only child? I mean, for such family-oriented parents, you'd think there'd be more, well, family. Now, obviously, there's nothing wrong with choosing to have just one child, and there's definitely no evidence that having only one child means your parents don't care as much, but they do seem to be really good parents, and their daughter has a pretty serious imaginary friend suggesting that, you know, maybe she would want or need somebody to play with. I wouldn't think it's a money issue either. I mean, the family is able to move on a whim from Minnesota to San Francisco and afford housing in the city, which is not cheap. So why no sibling? Well, I'll tell you why. Because have you seen the adoption process in this country? <laughs> I wouldn't want to go through it twice either. So here's a question. If she is adopted, do you think she knows? I actually think she does. I did some research and it looks like the suggested age for parents to tell their kids they're adopted is between 7 and 8. And by the end of the movie, Riley is 12, so I would guess she is aware of it. I say this because it explains a weird thing you might not have noticed on Family Island. Take a look around this island. Everything about it has to do with Riley and her parents. There's three pieces on the game board, three people playing on the swings, riding a tandem bicycle, jumping on the trampoline, not to mention the giant statues. The only thing a little askew here is the family tree. Despite the overwhelming presence of Riley's parents on this island, it is Riley herself who sits alone atop the family tree above what I can only assume is the family she hopes to have someday. If she's adopted, this family tree actually makes more sense because of course she considers her parents real parents because they are 
real parents. That's why they're all over the island. But biologically, they wouldn't make it to the top of the family tree because they didn't actually give birth to her. As far as she knows, Riley would be the biological starting point of her own family. <sighs> Plus, let's not forget who directed this film. Pete Docter, the man who also directed Up and Monsters, Inc. Up, as in Carl and Ellie, the most adorable, sterile couple of all time. And Monsters, Inc. as in unlikely father figures? This is a man who likes to play around with the idea of what a parent is is, and Inside Out is no exception. It's all there from her first memory to her blonde hair and blue eyes, to her sibling-less existence and the family tree we see on Family Island. All the signs are pointing to Riley being adopted. Which brings us to the final question. If she's adopted, why don't they bring it up? Because it doesn't matter. Those are her parents. That is her family. And the story they are trying to tell is one of a little girl having to grow up and dealing with moving to a new place. Not an adopted girl running away from her parents. Bringing it up would just cast the whole movie in a new light. And I believe that we, the audience, would define Riley by her adoptedness and not who she is. And that is not fair to Riley. It is not fair to define someone by just a part of someone. Ben, that's all I've got for you. My question for you and everybody else is, do you think Riley's adopted and does it matter? Let me know down in the towel section below and I will see you in another life, brother. These socks are amazing! Guys, thanks for watching. As always, please leave a like on this video if you haven't already and subscribe so you don't miss any future Inside Out or Pixar content. If you want to catch up on some old Inside Out content, you can click here to see who Riley's monster is and here to find out why Riley has different gendered emotions. Who knows?